stand for the uh, next to last talk on the last day, uh, putting up with the uh, fire marshal and the Jesus freaks in there and, and all that. Uh, uh, I'm Inertia, and I'm here to talk about uh, NMRCOS. It's a uh, distribution of Linux that uh, the Nomad Mobile Research Center developed. Uh, Nomad started this project a long time ago. Uh, and it never really got off the ground, but I th you know we uh, we've been working pretty hard on it after the uh, uh, events that uh, Nomads talked about yesterday at uh, at our panel. Uh, overall goals for the project, you know, it, we want a stable, secure, trusted system. Uh, users, we were initially we were going to make this you know kind of like a uh, as hard to install as we possibly could. Uh, it, you know, we'd basically provide you with a floppy and you'd get a, a shell and then, you know, tell you to untar this file or some shit like that. Uh, we changed that uh, when we realized that uh, we wanted to target, we wanted to make it more accessible to people that weren't really uh, that knowledgeable about security so that, it, you know, it comes up uh, uh, locked down and uh, uh, you, you don't, uh, so that the, the uh, the administrator just has to unlock things in order to, to uh, get access to the uh, to the internet and everything, so that it's, it's more secure. The intended uses, things like uh, you know, uh, human rights activists and stuff like that. Although, if you heard uh, uh, Philip Zimmerman's talk at Black Hat, I probably shouldn't say that because now I can't use that in court to get out of shit. So. Um, Anyway, like I said, uh, Nomad came up with this idea. His first idea was to use a Slackware install uh, and kind of hack through things and, and, and hodgepodge it together. It, it, never, it never really got off the ground. Uh, I, I th what I think what the problem was is that it was, it was a little, it was like too, there's too much overhead required to get it out the door. Uh, so. When I came on, I said, "Well, hey, why, you know, why don't we start with something else?" Uh, you know, and uh, we talked about uh, several different distributions. You know, Red Hat and Debian and stuff like that. We ended up to, we ended up going with Debian. And uh, reason why we decided to do that was because uh, I've had several problems with Red Hat's uh, Red Hat before, and uh, uh, the quality of Debian just seemed to be far and above the best of any distribution that I could I could find. Uh, their their documentation was up to date. They they had everything about how to make a, a derivative CD. Uh, it, it was just a really high quality distribution, and so we were, we decided to go with that. Uh, now the other thing is you know why not just start from scratch and and do a completely completely new distribution. We thought about that as well, but in the end, you know, the only the only real uh, uh, rationale for that would be just you know bragging rights. Uh, you know, we, we would have to we have to make our own installer, would have to make our own you know CD creation you know system and everything, and so it it, it just really didn't seem to be uh, th that uh, that big of a uh, uh, a problem uh, you know to. Uh, to take one that already exists. I mean, that's one of the, the hacker tenets. Use what's out there, right? So that's what we did. Uh, all right, so we got a Debian-based OS. We got a tweaked kernel that's still running uh, kernel 2.2. That's how old this project is. Uh, Nomad is, you know, I didn't do everything on the project. It took all of us to do it. Nomad uh, was the guy that did most of the kernel work. Uh, so uh, I'll talk about that here. We got 2.2.25 .2 um, right now. I think we got an update to that. The open wall patch, the Hap Linux pass, uh, trusted path and forest, and we got random IP IDs. Um, uh, we didn't go with the uh, GR security patch because Nomad thought that uh, it would be a little more they had some cool stuff in there, but Nomad thought that it, that it was more difficult to set up. So we ought to stay with what we got here and later on move on to, to that if we could. Now I should, note it, I should note that this isn't, the, the, the idea for this 
coming out now uh, with a 1.0 release, uh, there's, there's certainly going to be a lot of problems, and I'm sure you, you I mean, you guys, you're going to find a lot, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, but the idea is kind of like why we're, in, why we're releasing Encrypt and Encovert, you know, to get you guys to think and, and to try and uh, uh, come up with new ideas that maybe, you know, avenues we haven't even thought of, of how to lock the box down, how to do things. Uh, so when I talk about things like uh, uh, why we, uh, for instance, we, uh, uh, let me see here. But why, why we, inf w one of the goals of the project is we're trying to uh, enforce not, to help not just the security of the administrator, but the security of the users, the privacy of the users as well. That's why we have Encrypt on there. We're, we're planning on having uh, cryptographic file systems. We don't have it yet. Uh, we want to get this out to you guys so that you can use it, see what's wrong, see what you think can be improved, get it back to us, and uh, you know, away we go. Uh, we have some uh, customized applications. Pine, I think, is it still 4.56? Uh, it might have been updated, but we tweaked that so that the uh, the headers come back all screwy, so you you don't know uh, uh, what's sending it. And send me all 8.12.9. Uh, we went with that. That if you're familiar with Debian, they have three mini distributions within itself. It's stable, testing, and unstable. Currently, or at the time of this writing, uh, sendmail 8.12.9 was an unstable. So you may ask, why did we use unstable in our shipped, shipped version? Well, we found a couple problems with, uh, uh, security problems with it, and uh, Nomad felt safer going with uh, sendmail 8.12.9 as opposed to what's currently in Debian's. Yeah. That... Right. Well, the question was, why did we use SendMail as opposed to something else? Uh, Debian, by default, installs uh, EXIM, I think. And uh, so why do, we, why do we even bother selling SendMail by default? Well, the reason for that is uh, because it came down from the mountain on a tablet from, uh, from Nomad. He said, we're going to install SendMail. So if you don't like SendMail, blame him. Uh, and we also, he, that, that's what he's most familiar with, and uh, I haven't really... I'm not really a mailer guy, so I said, you know, what the fuck, we'll do that. Uh, the other thing we do is we uh, auto run uh, Bastille uh, by default during the second stage install, uh, assuming that you choose to install Bastille, it auto runs. Uh, I think I think we're the only distribution that does that on install by default. Um, uh, the other things that we got going on is it installs and boots up in a lockdown state. We've, we've done the tests where we install the operating system. We have another system hooked up. We run Nmap against it repeatedly to make sure that everything's locked down and it, it comes back. Everything's clean. Uh, locked down by default. You open it. The administrator opens it up if they, uh, if they feel like they want to uh, have a particular application running. Uh, we have uh, Snort on there that's also installed. Uh, if you go through the, uh, the task selection and select that. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, Encrypt and Encovert, which Nomad talked about yesterday. I was going to do this, and I'm really sorry I can't do it, but I, I was timing it, and I, I would go way over if I tried to do this and explain every step to you guys, and I'm really sorry. Uh, I, uh, there's just no time to, to do a, a live demonstration of it. Um, now you may be wondering, like, how do we uh, how do we maintain that? Well, we have a, a, a package repository set up just like Debian. Uh, the system is nmrcos.nmrc.org. That is also set up in your app setup whenever you uh, whenever you install the uh, the, the system. Uh, it should automatically go out there and look for uh, for package updates. Uh, we don't have anything out there yet. When we get back, we're going to throw in uh, Encrypt and Encovert and, and a few other goodies. Uh, the thing about Apt, it lets us graft on to Debian. We don't have to customize every single application. By providing our own app server, you can run Debian's version of X Windows, even though we don't provide it, and even though we don't may not you know support it. You know, essentially, you have X Windows and all the associated garbage that goes along with it. Uh, 
developing for NMRC OS. If you want to develop for NMRC OS, uh, creating a non-kernel package is, is really simple. Uh, and it's actually already taken, again, by, by basing it off of Debian, you can already, you can just go to the Debian website and check out the uh, Debian developer's reference, which tells you exactly how to make a package. Uh, if I had time to do the demonstration, and I'm really sorry, I would have shown you briefly how to do that. Uh, creating the kernel package is very similar. Uh, it, it's, it's also very easy. What you do is you uh, use a Debian supplied tool, a uh, kernel package that will tell you how to build it and install it and creates a, a, a dev for you. Uh, there's really not a, not a whole lot you got to do. It's, it's, they made it really easy. When you distribute your package, you can either send it to us or uh, FTP it to the uh, uh, to your own uh, uh, website. Uh, there's there's documents out there that tell you how to how to set up your own app repository if you want, so you can have uh, yours, ours, then Debian's, and kind of graft onto ours that way. Creating your own distro, we we have actually the the Debian included tools to create a CD require that you have an entire mirror of the Debian archive, or at least a section of it, uh, which makes it kind of, uh, uh, makes it extremely, actually, uh, disk-intensive. It's, you know, it's like, I don't know, 80 gig for the whole thing, I think, right now. We created some tools that allow you to, to create a CD using a very minimal amount of disk space. I think currently we're using, like, uh, maybe 150 meg total for the creation of the CD and everything. That's on there as an NMRC-CD package. So when you install that, uh, you, can, you can basically learn how to create your own NMRC OS-based CDs and kind of do what we did to Debian. Uh, let's see. Now, there's a lot of future plans for this thing. Uh, like I said, we're going to implement a lot, of, uh, a lot of things regarding privacy for the user, not just privacy and security for the admin. Uh, there's been a, a recent talk uh, in the Red Hat community about uh, opening up the, uh, the, the, pr the development process for Red Hat Linux, and I've been playing around with that, and I've got a, a semi-working copy of an RPM Red Hat-based version of this. And so we were talking about having, you know, both or uh, out there so that people that want to use an RPM or Red Hat based distro can do that as well. <clears throat> and now uh, I'm going to open this up to questions and follow up because I'm sure you guys have a, quite a few. Anything? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Let me run back there. Oh, uh, yeah, can I get a bit more specific about Trusted Path and other kernel mods? As I said, uh, Nomad was the primary developer on kernel mods and stuff like that, so I'm going to let him answer that, if that's all right. Hey, um, the... Uh Basically, on the trusted path, when essentially what it does is in the kernel, it enforces that when you run an executable, it has to be owned by root. It has to not be world or group writable. It has to be in a directory owned by root that is not world or group writable. And this applies even to root. That way, if someone gets on your box and puts some code in there, and for some reason you've altered your path to actually execute from your current directory first, for example, which would be stupid, but if you did that, the thing has to be owned by root. The whole idea is that if someone pops an account on the system, then they're going to have to they're going to have to get root to get their executable to run. That doesn't kill everything. I know someone's going to say, does it handle uh, the uh, like say a Perl dash e and then put your gobbledygook in there? No, it doesn't take care of that, but uh, it does uh, at least kind of. You know, raise the bar a little bit. As far as the other mods go, the main thing is the um, uh, the open wall patch, as well as um, uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with the uh, Hap Linux patch. Those are the two main uh, things. The Hap Linux patch mainly does some stuff for cheerooting and uh, uh, a little bit better, like uh, logging during uh, 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 p tracing and stuff like that. A little more control over what's going on there.
the hap linux patch where's it from um from some guy named Hank. <laughs> I can't remember the URL off the top of my head. Uh, Google is your friend. Uh, if you look for Hap Linux, uh, you'll find the uh, you'll find the patch. I can't. It's uh, it's like uh, aimsgroup.com slash something or other. I can't remember the URL off the top of my head. So. Yeah, we looked at the Trusted Debian project. There's there's other secure versions of Debian out there, Trusted, uh, uh, and some other things like that. Let me go up here. And we looked at that, and yeah, you yeah you may wonder, you know, why didn't we just you know join the Debian project and contribute that way? Why did we have to create our own our own distribution? Well, the reason the reason for that is uh, a couple reasons. A, a lot of us are extremely paranoid, and we don't want to join. Uh, any any other project, uh, Debian, I think, if I remember correctly, requires that you actually physically meet someone in order to get your key uh, signed and, and everything. Uh, there's a lot of us that uh, just that just really frightens us. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, the reason why is because there's there's been some differences. Uh, one of the one of the things I talked about yesterday, I forgot to mention today, is that. Uh, Something as simple as clearing the screen whenever you log out uh, was a difference between what we wanted and what uh, the Debian wanted. The latest Debian list, the uh, mailing list archive that I saw, was that they decided that by default Bash should not clear, clear the screen upon logout. Now I agree that you know security through obscurity never works. However, it, you know if we're targeting this for people that may not know a lot about security. It it just helps, you know. It's, it doesn't hurt, you know. Uh, if they don't know what they're doing, when they leave and they leave all the crap that they've been doing, they could leave something there that could later on be used to break into the system. So something as simple as that allows, you know, made us kind of think, you know, why don't we just go our own way? We'll graft on a Debian, uh, and we'll that way we'll have complete control over what we want to override. And, and how we want to produce this. What do we use for a firewall? Uh, that's currently IP chains, uh, two two kernel uh, IP chains. So that's what we're using there. And, and in the in the install, there's an actual thing where it's where it sets it up and all that for you. It's a GS2? GS variant? Okay. Well, cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We'll take a look at that. Uh, what's okay. Well, let me, let me talk to you after this, and we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll get... Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Uh, he was uh, saying that there's a Gen 2 kernel that uh, has... Uh, most of the features that we have in there, and it's a lot faster. Uh, the O1 batch scheduler, and a whole bunch of other shit. So, <laughs> so take a look at Gen 2. All right, yeah, cool. We'll do that. Really, uh, I am not aware of that. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if. It, we have we have some CDs to give out, so uh, and I've I think we tested every single one of them to make sure they boot. So uh, I'll I'll make sure to get you one. Okay. Do we provide source packages? Deb source packages? Do we provide Deb source packages? Uh, they are not on the CD. We're uploading them to uh, nmrcos.nmrc.org, so you can app get them just like all the other stuff. So that that should be done. We tried. We had some problems accessing it from here, so we're going to do it when we get back. Yes. Steg in the file system, like a rubber hose. <laughs> 